gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of our Savior. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Ritual impurity. 
And what happens is this Canaanite woman comes out. Now, we, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew calls her Canaanite, even though the Canaanite people really didn't exist anymore at this time. But he says it to put in our head this, this image of an enemy, the enemy of the Jewish people, the historical enemy that they have coming into this promised land. They're supposed to wipe the land clean of these impure, unholy people. So it would be a holy land. And the Gospel of Matthew tells us one of these historical enemies of Jesus comes out to him and yes. It's as inappropriate thing as it would be now to yell at somebody, hey, Jesus, son of David. He acknowledges who he is, his very Jewish identity. Son of David, David the king, the proud king of the Jewish people who united the tribe into a nation. Peter, the 
rock who did not sink? Peter, the last week Jesus said, Peter, you are a little faith. Because Peter had seen all these things and still not believed. And yet this woman, who had seen nothing, but had heard the stories of a God who provides abundantly, believes that Jesus has enough left over for her and her daughter. She gets it. And Jesus says that she has great faith. Now, in our letter to the Romans this morning, the letter to the Romans is a letter to a people who are mostly Gentile. Right? It hasn't been very long since Jesus has died, and people are still trying to figure out, like, okay, has God abandoned the Jewish people so that now the Gentiles are the new chosen people? Or maybe the Gentiles have to become Jewish to be part of this promise? And, and so the letter of Romans is kind of working this out. And what we, the little paragraph we hit today is saying that no, God did not abandon the Jewish people. God's promises are irrevocable. God's people are the Jewish people now and always. We have not supplanted them. Christianity has not supplanted God's promises to the Jewish people. We are blessed. We are blessed to be grafted onto the root of these promises that we get to share in the abundance of God's mercy, even though we're not part of the original promise. Or that we are, but it wasn't quite meant for us. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and then all people will be blessed through you, God told Abraham. That God's covenant to Jewish people remains, but the abundance is enough for us. Or maybe when we think about understanding God's abundant mercy and grace, we can just look at all of the scriptures written in languages we don't speak, and then translated, and then translated again into English. Now, am I, maybe, does anyone else here ever have to read Shakespeare when you were like in high school? Did you have to do that? Are you still making people do that? Maybe. You'll see. Yeah. Shakespeare, the original English, like your teacher tells you this is a joke and you're like, I don't get it. Because the culture is not the same. Even though English is our, like, is for many of us, our culture. And the tongue, English language, is our mother tongue. And yet, we don't, we don't get a lot of Shakespeare. That's only 400 years ago. Whereas the scriptures were written 2,000 plus years ago to a culture that's not ours, to people that were not us, in a language we don't understand. <coughs> and yet, the abundance of God, the goodness of God, is so overwhelming that this book of scriptures, of holy words, still rings true and beautiful. For us, thousands of years later, that even though we don't get all the jokes or the references, we can still see the grace of God shining through it. The crumbs are abundant. The crumbs are a feast in themselves. I believe our invitation this morning is to cultivate a spirit of curiosity, a spirit of learning. To see where God is surprising us, see where God's mercy is new, in a way we don't expect. This week I saw a picture on the internet, you might have seen it, where this new James Webb telescope, right, this telescope that's taking pictures deep, deep into space. That they, they send back this picture, and you look at this picture of the stars, and there's a question mark. Seriously, there's a picture of this ancient galaxy millions of miles away, and what you see is a question mark. It's like God's eternal calling to us to be like, stay curious. Where else can I be found? What else might, might I do? In our lives, it can be something as little as a new bird or a bird. A new flower or a weed, who knows?
knows what it is. Yeah, here it is. A new year, a school, a fresh pen, and a blank notebook. We start writing down our questions about God. God, I don't understand this. What's happening here? God, are you being rude to this lady? That was in my notebook this week. I haven't answered it yet. This Canaanite woman comes out of her town and she meets Jesus on this road and she screams out to him, Hear me and they That's not familiar. Hear me and they These ancient Greek words that we say often during the season of Lent. Read the common tongue of that time. Likely, this is what she said when she was yelling at Jesus on the road. Here ye, the song. It means both, Lord have mercy, and also, Lord, you are merciful. It is a prayer and a thanksgiving. It is an acknowledgement of what God has done and of what God is doing and what God will continue to do. Hear ye, Eleison. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are merciful. What does that mean? What are we learning? What are we seeing? <clears throat> May we continue to be surprised by the abundance 